Are you talking about military toxic exposure affecting some 900,000 uh, Marine veterans that were contaminated Correct. by water at a Marine Corps base there at Camp Lejeune? Um, but having said that, it looks like you now uh, can't be given any projects that involve contact with veterans. You work at the VA, you report on dangers and hazards mm -hmm. and wait times at the VA, but you can't talk to veterans. Uh, when you I know, see I, this kind of I, stuff I, happen in mm -hmm. corporate America, Scott, like if mm -hmm. you stop getting invited to meetings or you can't uh, have any contact with fellow members, they're trying to fire you. Exactly. And, and that's the goal. I mean, keep in mind, I'm the whistleblower who went to Congress about the backlog of health care records. They're about to try and purge the half a million pending records again, and they won't let me see the letter that they're going to send to veterans. Well, it to sounds like it. they're and really I, more intent, I, if I'm reading this at face value, and I could be wrong, mm -hmm. they're more interested mm -hmm. in purging you. They see you as a snitch, mm -hmm. and they want you out of there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They want me and all whistleblowers gone. I want to be very clear about that, Neil. This, unfortunately, the leadership in VA... Well, how many even more are like you, Scott? I mean, you're the most, you know, noteworthy public uh, face of, of the mm -hmm. whistleblowers at the VA. I know there are others, but how, how many others? Um, probably on the public level, maybe a handful. Behind the scenes, well, where there do are you guys meet? Whistle. Like uh, Denny's or what? To share? What do you do? <laughs> well, at this rate, we, we can't even meet online. I mean, we might have to get the FBI to reactivate Silk Road so we could communicate. But um, you know, we like regular citizens who are concerned about issues. You know, we'll talk. Um, you will get together, or it just happens organically. There's like no conspiracy. People will just see something wrong and call their local congressman, or they'll call people like. But one, one of the people office. that you had fingered, uh, you know, uh, as a whistleblower to say, all right, you know, she's up to something. This Angela Lawrence, the director of the Health mm -hmm. Eligibility Center in Atlanta, has filed a, a freedom of information request to obtain any email that you might have had about her to others mm -hmm. on why you want her out. It's, it, that's weird. Well, and, and here's the thing. I have never had anything personal against uh, Ms. Lawrence. If, if you well, it must be, him, it must be serious not... enough for her to get a FOIA request within their own agency to find out what the hell you're asking about her. Yeah, but think about this, Neil. I started talking about the pending issue in 2014. Ms. Lawrence didn't come to the office until 2016. So I think she personalized my conversations about those well, applications. Would you be and okay the with her seeing those files, regardless of what you think of them? Then go ahead, here they are. Here are my exchanges. Here's my back and forth. Well, that's a, that's a very good point. She actually has access to it. Remember, as a government employee, I guess my not, emails though, because are public she has this request in. Well, remember, but the request went to the government, not me. So the government could give her whatever's on my uh, Outlook exchange. They can or turn you that could. over to you her You could just volunteer it up you know, on the up and up. Go ahead. Here's my well, stuff. I can't. What I did was at the, based on my conversations with Mr. O'Rourke, when his staff asked for the emails and documentation regarding uh, member services managers, I turned that over to them. I have proof that I turned it over to Mr. O'Rourke and his staff, which even the investigators who came and spoke to me two weeks ago acknowledged that I've already given documents to them. Okay. So Without getting in those weeds, if you'll indulge me because you know so much more about this sure. than I do, but the big picture mm -hmm. to me is this. Few people have been fired. Uh, you know, directors and heads come and go. I'm just talking about mm -hmm. the VA uh, candidate possibilities to run the whole thing, come and go. We're still waiting. Um, you give the president the benefit of the doubt that he really wants to change things there, a key campaign promise. But without mm -hmm. a change in just the thinking there, it doesn't look like that is happening. So if I'm a veteran or a loved one of a veteran, I have a, mm -hmm. a lot of reason to still worry, don't I? You have tons of reasons, and I think that's one of the reasons, and, you know, I don't say this all the time, I think the president has to fire Dr. Clancy, the current head of VHA. There's no way for him to move forward with an agenda that's about changing the issues of the past, limiting veteran well, access to care. how many big heads have gone? I mean, I don't see a lot of well, firings I happening. Exactly. Now, most of the people that were fired are low-level people like janitors or right. clerks. N none of the big people have been fired. So the people that so President in other words, Trump new, talked I, I about... I keep interrupting. I, that always infuriates viewers, as it should. But, uh, you know, people <laughs> come in and out. Shulkin goes, and he was unanimously approved uh, uh, to, to retake mm -hmm. this job. 
Then he leaves under some controversy. Ronnie Jackson is named, and he leaves ahead of more controversy, so he doesn't have to deal with it. Then these five other names are, are, are tossed out, um, and now two retired generals. Do you think that the person who ultimately heads this agency should be a military figure? No. Um, VA primarily, and I know a lot of people disagree with me, VA primarily is a health care organization. On a secondary level, it's a claims office. If that person happens to have veteran experience in the military, that's great. But it serves the veteran community, to me, no good to have someone in there who just has a military experience but doesn't understand VA, just as it didn't serve VA to have Dr. Shulkin, who had no real government experience, who could not run VA. You know, um, I don't know if any military experience would have prepared you for just a screwed up mailing to, to you know, military veterans um, seeking mm -hmm. health care by mail. And a, a good many mm -hmm. of them, half the letters sent out to veterans were bounced back because either they didn't have the right exactly. address or whatever. So I don't know what kind of background would prepare you for that. But uh, I guess I keep seeing these stupid mistakes. I'm, I'm not saying you're right and they're wrong or they're right and you're mm -hmm. wrong. What I'm saying is I keep seeing these screw-ups, and I'm wondering what changes that? It changes when the focus is less about contracts and funding and more about management and accountability. That's a great question, Neil. What you find in the last administration, you're seeing the same thing under the Trump administration. It's about expanding the choice program, i.e. putting more money into the problem. But if your child overspends their credit card, you don't give them a, a higher limit. What you do is you teach them better fiscal management. If the choice program is being mismanaged and it's currently under investigation by the Department of Justice for, for overbilling or billing errors, you don't give that program more money and say, go about your business. You institute safeguards to make sure that the billing is appropriate, that the hospital staff is properly making sure each veteran has access to his or her uh, right. appointment outside the VA network. And that's what we have. What the president did, which I think was a mistake, was instituting a nationwide hiring freeze at VA without holding people accountable, without saying we're going to bring in more doctors to these hospitals. We are going to remove corrupt administrators. He sent Camilo Sandoval to our office, who currently runs the IT for VA, to address our systems issues. The pending issue is still a problem. Amazing. Combat All vets right. from Iraq and Afghanistan are still not getting immediate access to health care when they apply. So it's not enough to promote contracts like the Cerner IT contract. You've got to actually manage problems. You've got to be honest with veterans. Scott Davis, thank you very much, the VA whistleblower. Uh, thank very you. good having you on. I, I wanted you to hear this uninterrupted, folks, live. Uh, these calls that we have placed out to the, the, the individuals that Mr. Davis mentioned, we read their statements. They're always welcome to come on. Uh, this is about our veterans. This is about the care they get. They put their heinies on the line, folks. They took bullets for us. They deserve something better than what they're getting right now. I don't care if you're Republican. I don't care if you're Democrat. I don't care if you're conservative. I don't care if you're liberal. I don't care whether you think Mr. Davis is a snitch or whether you see him as a hero. Our actual heroes are getting hosed. That isn't right. That isn't fair. That isn't balanced. And that cannot stand.